You have a kid, don't you? You do. I know you do, so you don't need to hide it. I have just calmly accepted, like an adult, that I don't want to teeter along anymore, hoping it's all going to get better. Because she's quite a nervous type. Only she had the fear in her, see? And the fear made her strong. And I said, don't be so silly. Because it wasn't. It just wasn't her fault. And then you went to the loo. So I ran in and said, oh, I was hoping to catch you. And I had a little chat with Marion. Is that her name, your ex? And the spots are followed by pneumonia. And the pneumonia followed by a coma. And the coma followed by this. I mean, yeah. You get good days when everything's great, when you want to live your life for other people, you know, give them everything. Stop being some maybe selfish bitch. <laughs> Measles, mumps and rubella. I mean, it sounds like, a, sounds like a pack of lawyers, doesn't it? And I saw you meet this woman in a coffee shop. I mean, it wasn't a nice coffee shop. It was like a Costa or something and not even a good one, a shit Costa. Of course he lost his job. Fucking retard. Good thing I got out while I could. Wouldn't want Harry growing up in the distorted, disabled image of his fucking drip, drip of a father. I mean, I guess that's what she'll think. But then you just wake up the next day broken. And you know, that's not living. That's coping. And I am so very... Very, very tired of coping. Okay. Well, if you get all the scientists who wrote the report, and if you get all the journalists who reported that report, and if you get the Prime Minister who said that that report was right, and if you get all those women on the internet who went on like they knew what they were talking about when actually, actually they knew fuck all. If you get all those people and put them against the wall and shot them in the head one by one, then I might not feel so fucking lonely for a fucking minute.